Snowflake recently made some announcements that's going to reshape the data platform landscape. Now, whilst I couldn't make it myself to Snowflake Summit in San Francisco earlier this month because I'm too busy here grinding out the hard, long, cold Australian summer, I've went through all of the announcements and press releases and distilled them into what I believe are the top four most impactful announcements Snowflake have made. So sit back and enjoy, and I hope you find this video useful. Hey everybody, Adam here, and if you're new to the channel, I help data professionals like yourself stay up to date with the latest and greatest in terms of data platforms. And today we're diving into the most impactful announcements from Snowflake Summit 2025. And trust me, these aren't just feature updates, they're going to indicate the direction that Snowflake are moving in, and no doubt the competition will closely follow as well. So first up is OpenFlow. This is probably the biggest announcement in my opinion. Snowflake OpenFlow is built on Apache NiFi. Now Apache NiFi has been around for a long, long time. In fact, many years ago at the Hortonworks Summit, I presented a use case that we built at the time using Hortonworks and Apache NiFi. So whilst on the surface, this looks like another ETL or data integration tool, here's what Snowflake isn't saying out loud. For years, we've had this ecosystem where Snowflake focuses on storage and compute, while companies like Fivetran, Matillion, and others handle data integration. Snowflake just declared war on that traditional model. OpenFlow connects any data source to any destination with hundreds of processes available. It runs as a fully managed service in your cloud and integrates seamlessly with Snowflake's security model and governance features. But here's the real kicker. It's not about replacing your ETL tools. It's about Snowflake owning the entire data pipeline from ingestion right the way through to data science and insights. And think about it. If Snowflake owns ingestion, storage, compute, and analytics, why would you need anyone else? So the question isn't really about if OpenFlow is any good. It's built on a known and proven product with NiFi. It's about whether traditional ETL vendors are strong enough and are going to be able to adapt quickly to counter this announcement from Snowflake. So the second announcement is around Cortex AI SQL models. And this is really fascinating for me because this solves a problem not many people know they have today. We've all heard of AI democratization, but how many of your analysts are actually building and managing AI models today? Probably not that many, right? But what if they could embed AI models directly into their existing SQL queries and generate more powerful insights? Well, that's exactly what Cortex AI SQL does. You can now run classify, AI complete, AI filter, and AI similarity functions right in your SQL. So you want to analyze sentiment and customer feedback? Great. That's one SQL query calling an AI function. You need to extract entities from unstructured data. Again, one SQL function. And this isn't about replacing data scientists. There's always going to be a place for them, but it's about making AI more accessible to a broader set of people. And since your data is already hosted in Snowflake, it's leveraging that strong data management and governance foundation. Your data doesn't need to move out of the platform to be used in these functions. It stays exactly where it is. Bottom line here is Snowflake is making AI more accessible and actually making it the easier choice. In fact, not using it is a harder decision to make. Point number three is that there's a bunch of updates to do with Snowsight and how things are laid out in the navigation menu on the left hand side. We've also now got something called workspaces. And with this, Snowflake has essentially built a full IDE within Snowsight. You get nested folders, Git integration, split panes for comparing code, and proper version control, finally. And the Git integration bit is particularly clever. You can now use all those features that you'd be used to if you're using other tools that have native Git integration, proper branching, pull requests, and collaboration workflows. So this integration is a massive improvement from my perspective. It's something that my clients and customers who use Snowflake today always want. It's a lot more complex to make CICD work at the moment with Snowflake without that native Git integration. So that brings us on to the fourth and final point I want to talk about, which is object tagging. This has previously been the domain of enterprise Snowflake editions and above. It's now open to standard editions, so essentially all Snowflake accounts. This says to me that Snowflake now recognizes the importance of object tagging going forwards as part of its data governance suite, which is maturing all of the time. 
still not going to replace the likes of a dedicated data governance tool such as Calibra or Lation at the moment. And those tools that I mentioned earlier, they're pretty expensive. You can include Informatica in that ilk as well. And usually just the big enterprises can afford those. But this now, if you've got Snowflake, any edition, it opens the door for you to leverage these features and make the best of your Snowflake environment. For me, this is Snowflake saying that data governance isn't optional anymore, it's essential. And so now they're removing the restrictions and barriers that were previously in place so that if you're running a Snowflake standard edition, you can use the same features that used to come with Enterprise from an object tagging perspective. So what does this all mean? Well, we take a step back and look at these announcements together then a clear pattern starts to emerge. Snowflake isn't just adding features to build in a complete end-to-end -end data platform that handles everything from ingestion to AI-powered insights. They're making a play to be the only vendor you're ever going to need for your data stack. This is either a brilliant strategy or a dangerous overreach. But what it definitely means is the data landscape is going to get super interesting and more competitive than ever as the different vendors now compete for the same space within your data architecture. Are we witnessing the start of Snowflake evolving into different areas and different capabilities or are they spreading themselves too thin? Also, I picked out the four most impactful things from my perspective, but you may have your own thoughts as well. Love to hear about those. If you do, drop them in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you found this breakdown useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. New videos come in very soon.